Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast, the greatest record ever recorded by an Italian who looks like he's got a dead badger on his head. I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Indeed it is I, here and, too with you. And Jonathan. My, my intro is less, less long. Uh, and today we're talking about About Time. And as always, short and sweet, Luke, what did you think of the movie? I thought it was pretty good. Okay. Jonathan? It wasn't as good as I remembered, but I still like it. Oh, had you seen it before? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, I've, um, I've actually, I actually watched it, uh, I th- I'm pretty sure twice. Once with like my family, and then once with my girlfriend. Okay. That is a bombshell. Um, You've changed the game. I also thought this movie was pretty good. And I disagree that this movie is a rom-com. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of... It's All a right. it's a father son movie. <laughs> yeah, agree. Okay. It's not okay. Really a, like, I think that it's it's more of like a so remember how you asked like what a zero would be and I would I said like a bad Hallmark. This is like what Hallmark tries to be. Like this was like a successful like I think that this was like a feels good movie. And it yeah, like is a genuine see. feels good movie. Like yeah, I thing. just like I I wouldn't call it a romantic type movie because like their their relationship is never in question they immediately hit it off every time um Mm -hmm. they have really no struggles within their relationship other than the the time he lets the child draw on the manuscript and and that's even just a setup to punch you when you find out bill nahi has cancer yeah i think this wouldn't work as a relationship if the the cast wasn't so charismatic and charming yeah, I could see yeah. that. The actors definitely made it. Because the cast work. of this movie is incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's I, any... The uh, reason I, I, I chose it the first time was just because uh, the main guy was in um, Black Mirror. Yeah, yeah. It was a, like, oh, it was, that was a good episode. It was a pretty good episode. Is that um, the, the entire history of you, or is that the rewind one? I think um, it's the one where the... he dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the dead. episode. I just don't remember if, if it's called the entire history of you. I th- no, I, I think, think entire so. history of you is the one where that's it's the like rewind one. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking of the same. What is in this case? Uh, it's be right back. That's what it's point. called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Well, listen, I have uh, some things to say about this movie that you're probably not going to like. I might end up rating this the lowest. All right, now that okay. I think about it. Okay. Um, the main character is not a good person like interesting okay i had a a similar take on this i think they towed that line but i don't think it dipped into it for me i I don't think he's like completely evil but he literally is like oh this girl i like is seeing someone else fuck it so yeah i i was like there's a world where this movie becomes like uh passengers like a pseudo horror movie um i don't think it does I also think he's an idiot. Like, so so again, the, during the blind date scene, they hit it off immediately. It's made very, very clear that they work well together. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he fucks it up by going and fixing the play. Why not just, like, go fix the play quickly and get back to your date? Or not fix the play? <laughs> that's, that's interesting that you're, like... That would make him a better person, though, because I feel like that uh, is, like, one of the better times where he, like, wasn't, where he was, like, genuinely selfless. Um, but, but to, to Luke's point, he later, he, he gets into a relationship with her after finding out she would have met someone else. Hmm. Which is, like, Thanks. manipulative. Yeah. So that's no. why that's where it beca- it could become like a pseudo uh, right. horror movie of like he is puppeteering this woman's life to make her fall in love with him. Oh, when he definitely know. is. Like, like there's but no that denying. Luke, this might surprise you. Uh, I never got that the first two times I watched it. When I watched it alone, that is like I was like, wait a minute. Oh, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, I agree that that scene is is uncomfortable. However. Yeah. Um, yeah, he could just go back to the 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 night before he met her, or she met him, rather, and uh, 
you know, history would have played out the way it actually would have played out. Mm. And they would have ended up together. Yeah, he did jump through a lot of hoops that didn't have to happen. Yeah, because in, in, if, if you take, like, the established timeline of he doesn't fuck with time, like, mm -hmm. he meets her at the blind date, they hit it off, they swap numbers, they're, like, it's, they're gonna start dating, given the quickness of the relationship we see in the future. Um, and her, her meeting him becomes irrelevant. I don't even remember the character's name, I just keep referring to him as him, the guy at the, the after the art gallery. Yeah. Um, Did he have a name? The boyfriend? Probably. Was he even yeah, a I'm boyfriend? Sure. I'm sure it's yeah, they were boyfriend and girlfriend at that point, and they oh, okay. were like had lovey dovey names that yeah. Yeah. Um so, yeah, I also I, thought I, that the movie was going in a different direction later on. I thought he was gonna have to be forced to choose between his uh his love or his sister. Um since they kind of built that up at the very beginning when he goes, you know, he says something in the uh, very beginning monologue something along the lines of like i would do anything for my sister she's the best person i know yeah and i thought they would they would kind of <clears throat> okay so when he goes back in time well i think that's supposed to be a contrasting party, statement yeah but when he when he um goes back in time and he you know tries to make her life better and then like finds out like oh it fucked with my kid day, yeah. my kid's not the same how did he just like go back in time and redo everything? He, he just kind of quickly. I think he just did the redid the moment that he just redid. Yeah, and then didn't change it. Yeah, hmm. because we we see him at another time enter the same time stream when he fucks up something twice, right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was. Oh, the the play. He goes back to the play twice. Yeah. So he can go back to the same moment twice and change what he did. So he just goes back and doesn't change things. And then jumps forward. Hmm. Um, which actually, I do, take, I, I do take issue with something. Um, so it, it's highlighted that him going back, um, rescuing his sister, changes his kid. I'm fine with that. You know, the, the sequence of events that lead to a child would, would change. Yeah, something when she asks for the insurance child, he's like, Oh, I have to choose between another kid and my father. I would argue that if he's going back to these isolated incidents, like going back to the ping pong table and just but he playing ping pong with his father, back in time. nothing would change, right? His first off, his dad understands time travel, so he's not going to change things based on this behavior. His dad is already aware that he is going to die. His dad knows about the cancer way before he tells his son. So his dad would change nothing about his behavior. And also, you think you would have days that, uh, like, if you knew this, you would have days where it's like, we're just going to hang out. Like, it's us two. That's it. No one else. Yeah, and that's, and that's, what, that's what the ping pong scene is. Like, they spend the whole day together. They're, and, like, they go walk on the beach and, like... But if you spend an entire day together and nothing else, then it would change absolutely nothing if you decided... But it, it doesn't to... matter if they spend the whole day together. If they spend an hour together, you just go back to that hour. I actually think that this is a, a further problem where, like, I think what they were trying to get at was more of, like, a butterfly paradox of, like, uh, the exact, like, moment, the exact, uh, yeah. you know, way. But Definitely. it's, like... But it's like then anytime you go back, it should fuck up everything. Right. Like your kid should yeah. be different, no matter if you change something big I or was, small. I was watching this with my girlfriend, and I took. I was like, you know, if I use this power, I would just go back one day at a time, like max. Really? Yeah, and then later on, that's kind of what his, uh, what his dad does. So well, like, that's what he does. I, as well. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't go back far because it could fuck shit up. But if you could go back one day. And, like, let's it say you already knew. Um, no, no, no. Think about this, right? Like, I know it also doesn't make any sense that the guy's like, the, the, the dad is like, you don't want to be rich. Everyone I know who's rich is really mean and mad. And it's like, yeah, but if you're independently wealthy, you, you don't have to worry about shit. Then you, you don't have any responsibilities. And also, but, they live in a fucking mansion. Right. That's So that's what the dad's saying. The dad isn't rich, but he was well enough off to retire and not have to worry about things. So he's saying, he, basically, I think what the dad was trying to say was worry about a happy life, not 
being rich. Yeah, of course. Because that's, like, that's the say, dad's whole deal. Let's say if you wanted to, I don't know, I was thinking about it. Let's say you wanted to make a fuck ton of money, right? What you would do is you'd go back in time one day. You you know, you, beforehand, you'd hop on Robin Hood and look at what the top mover is. And then you would just, the day before, put like a giant call on whatever made the most money. Yeah. And then do that like once a year and just be like, yep, that's my money. <laughs> Whenever you need money, just do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think that uh, that just plays into like the feel goodness of it, though, is like, I don't know, it would it would feel bad if they were like, if you knew, then you could be fucking wealthy. You know what I mean? So I think that they had to have a reason for um, I like you have to relate to the characters a little bit. If you just saw him on Robin Hood and that was all he did for his job, you'd be like, Here's oh, fuck this guy. Yeah, because, again, this movie isn't... Uh, that's that's something a comedy would play with, right? Is, like, getting rich. Going back in time, getting rich. This movie isn't yeah. that. This movie's a family movie. Like, this is a father-son, and yeah. to a lesser extent, the other members of the family. Um, this movie is just about their family. Yeah. And when it, when it does that, I think it's at its best. When it's having a father son moment. Yeah, it's like I would, I would argue that you guys discount the entire rest of like the relationships, though. Because the relationship the stuff is, is cute. Strongest, it's it's but... nice. It's yeah, cute, there's but... no conflict in the relationship ever. Yeah, there can never be any conflict. If there is any conflict, guess what? He just goes back in time. <laughs> but but no, it, we don't. It's not even that. It's not even there's conflict and he's manipulating it. We literally don't see conflict. Like they're just happy together yeah there's maybe the conflict is left entirely for off screen yeah and all relationships have conflict so it's a little yeah this this movie crazy. isn't like the a plot is the father son the b plot is the sister the ro the relationship's the c plot it's like the overarching thing that glues things together but yeah that's what i was saying like if if they weren't so charismatic and like fun together you would be like okay what's the point of this yeah definitely there's just some cute moments that they spend uh together with one another but again their moments that were cute did not have to be time travel moments yeah as well that's and why yes yeah, it's, it's the you, sequel you feel it's its sorry own thing. for the yeah and you feel sorry for the girl almost the entire time like Ooh, because he's being disingenuous he, he could just tell her like hey i can go back in time yeah uh, so the only time uh, maybe i'm misremembering um the only time i can think of where he used the time travel in a way that i felt was manipulative was the art gallery boyfriend scene the art gallery well, he also art. tried to be manipulative with that one friend charlotte he, at the beginning he did that's and true. he also he also went i met with rachel mcadams multiple times to have uh like the best sex with her so that she would have the highest oh, that's chance true. of I don't know. There's definitely a lot of uh Yeah, I again I I definitely think this is like at the line of like Yikes dude. Yeah, but I, I thought it was um it towed the line enough for it to not be terrible. I think it towed the yeah, line yeah, enough no, for me. Because especially like uh, it, it, again the sex scene uh She's not, like, disappointed or ready to leave him after the first time. Yeah. He just wants to do better. And then yeah. the second time, it didn't even seem like a he wants to do better. He's just like, I just want to do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, I, I thought the, uh, you know, I, I, it's weird. I like this movie, but I think it's better as, like, a thought experiment. I don't know. Really? I, I kind of disagree with that because, like, you can't feel you can't feel good without seeing it. You can't feel good without seeing people feel good. Yeah, but the like the limitations that are placed, like Brendan said, they they don't make any sense. So like, oh yeah, why yeah. can't he see his dad? Fuck it, like yeah, I would, like, I would it, argue that going back to see his dad would affect nothing. This is a super contrived movie, absolutely. Like this this third watch, like I said, uh, I I liked it significantly less. Like I still think it's good, um, but then like. I, you just like don't accept the contrivances i guess like the first time i watched it because i watched it with my family like i wasn't about to like talk shit about it what you know the what i mean is this why is right this <laughs> right 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 uh so i just kind of like accepted it and i think that that's when the movie's at its best and um so this is like one of the few it's not a movie to think about yeah yeah 
This is one of the few movies in this genre that I like genuinely enjoy. So I'm actually I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. But again, I, was, I, I think it's in the wrong genre. I think the romantic elements serve as a vehicle to distract you so that it makes it more uh, punchy when the actual beats happen. I agree, but like so, I don't know, I don't know what to call this movie because if you call it a family movie, that could be like a fucking yeah. Movie, it's uh, yeah, it's it's hard. It's like, to, I think it's yeah. a like it's a weird father son. It's a movie. good family movie. Yeah, <laughs> like there's yeah. like because like literally like just straight trash. You get a happy relationship beat to distract you from the fact that the sister has gotten into a car accident. You get um, a slight conflict in the relationship of the child uh, drawing in the manuscript to set you off. Uh, like off kilter for the punch that Bill Nighy has cancer. Like all the relationship stuff just serves to either create a conflict for him to solve, uh, like or like uh, not a conflict for him to solve, a choice to make, like between the play and the the first date, or just to distract before the real thing comes up. And also, we got to talk about how multiple times, multiple times. Uh, Kit Kat expresses that she did not have a good time that in London that like you know she has problems going on and not once up until there's a car crash does uh, the main character actually decide to be like alright let's roll it back here but like you could have gave her enough money to be independently wealthy or you know whatever you need to do to be like here she knows i mean does she, she she really doesn't know about the ability i mean the but dad it, just as yeah, much no one in the board. family knows the dad said he never told his wife all i gotta say is you think you would uh tell your like, partner that you could all time no, no, just but here's the thing. I think that I think that the movie had to do that again. Like, this is just another thing that you have to accept because if he told his wife and then his wife told the daughter, like the daughter would tell her boyfriend and the boyfriend, would, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, okay, like, but you don't even have to tell anyone. You could just be like, for example, you find out what the winning lottery ticket is or whatever, and then like you put it in her bag or swap it. Like, hey, let's go get lottery tickets, and then. You just swap it and be like, "Oh no, that was yours." Yeah, that was yours. Just gaslight. Congratulations, them. whatever. Yeah, just I mean, manipulate. It's, it's not really a gaslight. <laughs> well, like, it is. <laughs> to be like, you you won, like a million dollars. Congratulations, whatever. So I you're are, so you're saying it made you uncomfortable when people manipulated things in this movie, but if they manipulated them to the benefit of others, cool. I think what what bothers me is that you can see the sister in pain like throughout the movie throughout the entire movie and he never <laughs> once stops to even like really ask what's going on or anything and they're supposed to be friends like they're supposed to be really good friends okay but i mean you have a sister i have a sister like i, I mean as a sister just stuff to yeah if, well you you don't I, I you have sisters you, you, you assume i don't have sisters no i'm saying you don't agree with uh luke on this point and i i can't speak for your relationship but i'm saying like but like stuff like that happens like you you can assume that things are fine and stuff like that doesn't happen when you fucking travel through time okay but like he didn't have like a need to because in, in any movie or any uh just like real life thing where somebody's just like yeah you know it's a little rough right now and you're just like Oh, but you'll get through it because you just assume that things are fine. I just kind of thought that it was just something like that. Like, he didn't feel the need to go back in time to, like, watch her for a day. Madness. Really? I don't know. When they're yeah, I wouldn't use my time travel powers to, like, stalk my sister and find out if her life is all right. Like, just, just help her out. Like, you know, <laughs> do the bare minimum. But I just don't think that... And this goes back to his dad's philosophy of just, like... The dad was like, yeah, you can't just kind of get it. You got to, like, have some meaning in your life. And I think that he didn't want to just, like, solve her problem. Or, like, think that he's solving her problems because then she loses her agency. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and I think that can... point is also referenced uh, after the car crash. He sits down with Rachel McAdams and says, like, we need to do something about Kit Kat's drinking or whatever exactly he says. And she's like, well, I think this is a problem she kind of has to solve for herself. 
Yeah. That's a line in the movie. I mean, that's true, some things, but like, if you didn't have it get fucked up to begin with. To change the entire course of your sister's life? It, it's so funny that you're like, uh, he's kind of manipulative, but then you're like, man, if only he had yeah. manipulated her into being the type of person that I like. Yeah, you're saying he should go no. back years and change the entire course of her life. She literally says, I'm a huge fuck up. Like, I don't know. Okay. But and then he does go back in time. He does do that. And the only reason he reverses it is because his baby is different. So you're wrong. I just, I'm just arguing that it's just as manipulative. And actually, I would disagree because he takes her back and lets her fix it. He lets her decide the course of her life. Which is really shit. No, him deciding the I'm... course of her life would be way worse. Hold up. Wait, wait, Luke. Please defend this. Defend the... All right. Here's what I mean. First of all, now people know about it, right? Which you were told not to do, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold that shit in. Like, if someone gave me a secret, like, hey, your brother could talk travel, and it was, like, true, I'd be like, oh, fuck. Let me get down on that. Like, okay, well, gonna... that's, that's a you thing. Right, that's, a, that's not a... And also, there is no way that if she could, you know, went back in time that far, that he would ever end up with uh, Rachel McAdams. No way. 100% guarantee you there's no way. It's too much of a butterfly effect. And yet he just ends up with Rachel McAdams again. I don't believe well, it. I mean, well, he can he control did. the course right. of his timeline. Yeah. And just go, make sure he shows he up met. on the same night. Well, that's assuming that he met Rachel McAdams ever. Yeah, he, he can go back in time. He can make sure he meets Rachel McAdams on the same he night. He knows her life. And I'm sure at that point he knows her like history, so he could just go to like any point like if you're talking okay, about here's my problem with stuff. this movie the time travel makes no sense no it that's doesn't any movie with time travel yeah like, sometimes it, it does it, it literally makes no sense there are good time all. travel movies like as far I mean, as the time travel coercion. movie this movie we watch what? the only part that what the only it? payoff for this movie being a time travel movie really yeah. by the end is the fact that the dad and the son have like a post-death uh talk and that is beautiful it's a really good scene but I think for the rest of it, it could have been done without the time travel. Yeah, probably. Are you talking about Coherence? That's not a time travel movie. Yeah, Coherence. Oh, I kind of had time travel mm -hmm. elements. That's a multiple dimension movie. Yeah. yeah. Primer is a time travel movie. It's a good-ass time travel movie. Looper is a time travel movie. It's a, it's a bad time travel movie. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. Well... <laughs> Have you it watched really it? Really doesn't make sense. When's the last time you saw it? <laughs> it's fine. It I doesn't. It, it does not twice. follow its own time travel rules. It does not. It's fine. people. People get marred and then on the spot change. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's fine. It's not. It's bad. It's a bad movie. Uh, yeah. So this is a movie that just kind of gets uh, it falls apart when you think about it. But I think it does a pretty good job at. Uh, making it so that you don't have to think I about think it. this is a mediocre movie carried by a stellar cast. That's if this cast I, wasn't I incredible, I would not rate this movie as high as I'm going to at the end of this. I just genuinely, like, even this time, which I, I like the least, so this is probably going to be the lowest rating that I, like opinion that I've had of this movie thus far. But, uh, yeah, no, like, it's solid. Like, it's it's just a movie that you can show anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I mean, I this movie has that. a lot of really good scenes. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, even in their relationship, like they're very comfortable and funny together from the start. Um, everything yeah, the with the dad is really well. Yeah, everything with the dad is phenomenal. Uh, the scene with the uncle at the funeral is incredible. Um, it's just it's really like really good casting for this movie. I'll agree with that one hundred percent. I couldn't think of other people to like cast in the roles. I think if you changed a person in the movie, you would have to change a lot of people in the movie to find again a cast with a lot of chemistry together. You could probably leave Bill Nighy as the dad. He's a great actor and would probably do well playing off of anyone who isn't just like cardboard. He radiates dad vibes. He's a, a phenomenal actor. What about changing out Bill Nye for Bill Nye, the science guy? Bill Nye, he, not Bill Nye. Yeah, I know, but what is Uh That'd be bad. I don't think Bill Nye is a good actor. <laughs> That's one way to find out. <laughs> but yeah, are we, are we ready to rate? 
Um, possibly. This is a very short episode. I was surprised. I was actually expecting uh, at least one of you to hate it. Really? Yeah. There's nothing to hate, really. You know what? It's not a rom com, so it's fine. <laughs> I think it is like it is pretty contrived. And I thought the rom com elements they were cute. They weren't anything serious, but they were cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I it, it does that. have very like like the most rom commy thing I can think of in the movie is when Kit Kat ends up with Jay. Whereas, like right. a, a very clear sister ends up with best friend, but let's throw them together type of thing. I think that's more because they she already knows that she ends up like, oh, I actually really like him, you know. Well, no, I mean, like they time travel, they come back, and she's like, I'm with Jay. Because the memories yeah, yeah. start coming back He's to her. He's cute, yeah. Yeah. And then that felt I think it's wrong nice wrong. that he kind of tells him, like, how about Jay? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that's, like, a bad thing. Or, like, it just, that felt very, just like, rom yeah. 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 All right, yeah, uh, we can score if we don't have anything else. That's fine. All right. You short one. Oh, and one more thing. We <clears> have to talk about the toast. The toast oh the, the yeah. toast scene all the different toast scenes i feel yeah. like that's unbelievable to be like yeah all of the people i know men in my life are just fucking horrible well to be fair he doesn't have that many friends and we <laughs> are shown how horrible they are throughout the course but of the to movie. be honest to be <laughs> honest the payoff is awesome oh the payoff's great so i think yeah, with with the dad giving it it's it's better because of it. it it leads into you know the yeah the father something like i i think the friend having a slideshow like an awkward best man speech that's pretty realistic um i mean we're shown that what's his name harry is a drunkard <laughs> like so like his speech being bad is not surprising i think rory being bad is like one too many for the joke or does rory not go mm. I feel like Rory goes, but I'm I'm now I can't yeah, he, remember he his does. speech. He, he talks mad shit. Um, he talks mad shit. Yeah. He. Oh, never mind. No, Rory's the second one, right? Or Rory's the, the lawyer friend. He goes and he like goes into detail about like, oh yeah, and I was in a divorce court case, and anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So I think his is the least realistic. Like it's maybe one too many for the joke. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the payoff with the dad going and then them talking after he's like, oh, I wish I said I love you. And then goes back and does it again. I think is really good. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely played up for bad best man speech. Aha, uh -huh, relatable. <laughs> yes, we're all married and we've all had best man speeches. <laughs> Very relatable. Yeah. Her best man well, speech is even still like a thing that happens. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've almost I'm every wedding I've went to has had them. I'm trying to think yeah. of weddings I went to. I guess I just don't pay attention during the speeches at weddings because they're usually bad. No, they're. <laughs> I had a really uh, <laughs> uh, sister's wedding. Cousins got. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> and uh, I think the best man speech was fine. It was pretty good. But then, uh, my okay, so. Her cousin's dad, or uncle, I guess, gave a speech, and it was really bad. He was like, I'm, I'm an IT guy. Oh, and, no. uh, like, <laughs> Don't start off your speech with your profession. It's not relevant. Uh, well, let me, let me tell you why. Because I'm an IT guy, and, you know, uh, and it was just, I could not pay attention like, to it. Your, your profession has nothing to do with the wedding you're at. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty wild. I was just like, ooh, this is... Did, did you go to Brookie's wedding? No. Oh, we're both bad people. Fine. They're extenuating circumstances, but still. <laughs> yeah. There was, there, was, there was a pandemic going on, you know. There was a plague. Yeah. There was there was a plague in our families, like kind of against vaccines or something. I don't know. Crazy. <laughs> also, I feel like since we've um started I, I realized this the other day. Since we started doing the movie thing, uh the movie thing, the movie podcast version. I don't think we've ever referenced our relationship to one another. So if anyone ever only listened to the movie episodes, they would have no idea that we were family. 
other than like random references just now? We had to have because we I said stuff so. like we, we said stuff like we've talked about like grandpa, grandma, papa. I feel like we it. only talk about that after. Maybe. Why does it always come up like right after that? Uh, I don't know because we start drinking and talk shit about our family. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think that's, I never talk shit about any. Um, yeah, we're cousins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's a fact. We're cousins from different sects of the family. It's just crazy. It would be interesting to do sibling episodes at some point. Like just invite our siblings on? Yeah, yeah, like like invite Trevor on, have him pick a movie, or invite Brookie on, have her pick a movie. Oh, that would be yeah, that would be. I don't know if I don't know if Brooke would. She just pick a Disney movie. Oh god, yeah, we watch Beauty would. and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be Friends or something. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's her favorite movie of all time. Oh uh, yeah, well I mean it kind of it just it's whatever as long as it's Disney it's yeah but I but Beauty and the Beast is her favorite Disney movie right. Yes. Anyway, none of this is germane to about time. No, it's all pointless. Um, pointless scores. Points. Luke, what are you giving this movie? I'm between a 7 and an 8. Okay. I, I really don't know. Okay, we can circle back around if you want. <laughs> Carry the two... Uh, remove edge cases. I don't... I don't know. I did like this. I'm going to give it an 8. Okay. Uh, Jonathan? Um, I'm going to say an 8 as well. Okay. I think I'm giving it a 7. That's fair. Um, Brendan with the hard 7. Because I, I mostly, I don't know that I'll watch this movie again. Even even though I enjoyed it, it's not like the kind of movie I need to watch again. Like, I'm not going to pick up anything new if I watch it again. I mean, all of the themes are very simple. <clears throat> yeah. Money doesn't make you happy. Uh, people matter more than things. Uh, let things roll off. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's like that's it. Um, definitely a good cool. movie, though. Cool. Enjoyable. Yeah, it was fun. I felt like you know I got the feels a little bit at the end there, and that counts for something. Where does this put it in our ranking? Fourth highest high. tied? It, is it actually? Um, yeah, I think it's tied for four. Oh, wait, maybe fifth. Oh, wait. Uh, we've got Your Name at 8.6, Mononoke at 8.3, Moonlight at 8, and then This and Handmaiden are both 7.6. There we go. My goodness. Put Jonathan's score in mine, and mine in Jonathan. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, oh, man, we really love to give movies sevens and eights. I mean, <laughs> that's I feel like because most of the movies we've have been fine movies, like we haven't picked anything egregious. I mean, I will say there's one movie that I gave a ten, but you know, you are the only person to give a ten. Yeah, we but it's also a movie I chose that I fucking love. Yeah. So. I honestly, okay, so since we're ending this episode, I can talk about my pick anyway. I'm thinking about picking Big Fish next week, um, which is a movie I really love and is uh, in some way similar to this movie. It is also a father-son dynamic. Okay. I believe it is 2005, directed by Tim Burton. Do you, um, do you remember much about this like when's the last time you watched it last time i watched big fish yeah mm, two or three years ago probably i th oh, think okay. i think I, I i think i showed it to ariel at some point i think i watched it pre-teen so it's um, been a while i definitely watched it a bunch of times as a kid which is weird because this is like now nah, i mean I don't think this movie would be any of our target demographics. Well, well I, guess, I guess like maybe. It, you like it. It, it's a movie about a father-son dynamic and reconciliation. I guess since it's about reconciliation and we all have uh, less than ideal paternal relationships, 
Maybe it is our target demo. I was expecting Jonathan to go, no, I have a great relationship. What? Were you? <laughs> yeah. Have you paid attention any time we've had a conversation? I have multiple times, but I still expect him to be like, hold on. Just to say, hold on, basically. <laughs> like, <laughs> just to be that guy. Yeah. Well, wait a second. I don't, I don't like, think no. it's like, I don't think he would say it's like egregious, like. No. But. I don't, he just I, said less than ideal. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I fair. don't think he considers his relationship with his yeah. father ideal. <laughs> Um, okay. So yeah, it might be Big Fish. I haven't fully decided yet. Um, I, I don't know. I feel weird picking a movie that I'm like, I really like that I feel like I'm going to rate high. Um, you guys are so picky. Just, just, just choose a movie. Just a movie. do it. That's how I feel. If you, wanna, if you want to watch this movie and you want us to watch this movie, it's the perfect Cause movie. Because it's just, it's, it's like, because I know Luke's seen it and I've seen it. It's like more I, said, I, 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 I hope remember. I don't get why you guys think that that is like because it's, it's more interesting to present a movie to both of you that you haven't seen like coherence I had seen and that was fine. You say that, but I just presented this movie to you guys and like we didn't have that much to say. Yeah, I will tell you, I remember all. <laughs> well, there's not a lot to say about about this movie. Yeah, I, uh, the but it's not like this is like which, a stylistically beautiful movie. The extent of which I remember Big Fish is he goes to the village without like shoes. And, and then you don't even remember good. that right. He goes with shoes, idiot. And he has to get rid of them. Yeah. Come on. But anyway, man. all I remember is... All right, we'll pick, we'll pick Big Fish. Because I think... Um, so Luke doesn't remember it. You haven't seen it. And at the very least, uh, from what I remember, this is a stylistically gorgeous movie. Like, uh, I mean, we'll get into it next week. But Tim Burton, if nothing else, is a very stylistic filmmaker. Absolutely true. I like most of Timmy's work. I feel like, if anything, this may be his last good movie. You think this is his last good movie? Again, we'll. Uh, this is definitely something that will have to come up next week because um, mm. this movie's two thousand and five, if I remember correctly. Name a Tim Burton movie after that is a killer. Oh, let me just let me just double check when this movie came out. Big Fish is two thousand three. Uh, Corpse Bride is after this, which I thought was good. Sweeney Todd's mm -hmm. after this. I wasn't a fan. You didn't like Sweeney Todd? Okay. Um, Alice in Wonderland like isn't a good movie, but it is a very interesting looking movie. Yeah, okay, this might be his last good movie. If you, if you don't like Corpse Bride, this would be his last good movie. If you, like, if you don't like Corpse Bride and Sweeney Todd. I just thought Corpse Bride was meh. Like I, I, like, I like Corpse Bride and Sweeney Todd. I'm going to look at Big Fish's rating. Wow, okay. Yeah, we'll get into we'll get into all this next week. Uh, I'll we'll pick Big Fish. This will be my official pick, because um, this is another movie that I think has a tremendous cast. Tremendous. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Big Fish next week for my pick. Then I guess that's it for this week. About well. time joins the decent pick. Let's go. Um, that was a risky one. I don't know. Yeah. You guys may say that it was like a. a, a I don't like, think so. No, I think this I mean, is a risky pick. Here's the thing, Jonathan. Because you, you say guys, your name was wasn't risky, but I don't. Brandon literally I don't said he would. Your name is risky. He would tank your name. I said I didn't think I would like your name. I didn't spitefully say I'm going to tank this movie. <laughs> It was implied. I don't think it was implied. I've never gone into a movie saying, this is how I'm going to rate it, because that's insane. That's not how we, already, we already, we already discussed this, Luke. Your riskiest pick was Handmaiden. That was a genuine risk. But yeah. We'll see. Um, I think I, I'd have to go over the numbers. I think Jonathan potentially still holds the title for worst picker. Oh, yeah, uh, for but sure. But I think I've come very close because of Mouse Hunt. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I th Brennan, I think you're in worst now by far. You think so? Okay, let's see. Yeah. Tenet's aggregate was five. No, because there's Tenet oh, and Lost in Translation. Oh, cause, oh yeah, yeah. Tenet and Lost in Translation, whereas um, Mouse Hunt is quite low, but Snowpiercer is average because both you and I like Snowpiercer. But when you, when you include the aggregate of the 7.6, I think that'll put Jonathan... Well, but we haven't included my next movie yet. Of course, yeah. Jonathan's the first pick in the cycle. Um, but maybe we'd, we'd have to go over the numbers. I'm definitely close because of Mouse Hunt. 
And the fact that, that Jonathan was, didn't that like that Snowpiercer. Yeah. But Lost in Translation I, was rated lower than Tenet or Mouse Hunt. Yeah, but I, I actually am surprised Lost in Translation and not Mouse Hunt. It was because we all were in agreement. Yeah, about... we, we all thought Lost in Translation sucked. I like Mouse Hunt. Lost in Translation didn't get the lowest score, though, did it? No, it's I the lowest score. It. It's, no, it it's, it's 4.33. No, no, I I'm talking it. about it didn't get the lowest, like, uh, like the lowest one person is given one. Uh, it's tied um, for lowest. Yeah, yeah. technically. Oh no, no, so actually no, four. no. You gave Mouse on a three, which is the lowest score. Oh, okay. three. Is... Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lost in translation has two fours and a five, which Luke rated Lost in translation the highest. Yeah, five. I thought it was. It's a pleasant movie to look at, at the very least. It's a bad movie. Um. Anyway. It's just barely bad, though. That's why it's a it's four. It's not so, just barely bad. It's a bad movie. Why would you give it a four? Yeah, why would you give it a four if it's, you think it's, it's like, still, terrible? It's still shot okay, but the story is bad. I, I would say a four is I, just barely bad. Because five is whatever. Four is I like, love hey, Bill Murray. I'm a fan of Bill Murray. Yeah, he's cool. I don't think that that was the role for But he's him. not even, yeah, he's not even, like, charming in that movie or anything. No, just, like, because, because in that, like, like we, we, were, we talked about, like, everybody was their own misery. So, yeah. like, when he was being snarky, it wasn't like, ha ha, it was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, it was like, that. here's Bill Moore, he was, here's Bill Murray phoning in and being Bill Murray for this role. Yeah. Here's Bill Murray, except instead of, like, I'm, having... I'm fun, confident he, in my five for Lost in Translation. I disagree, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about this now because we haven't brought it up before uh, at the end of the year not the calendar year but a year of doing this so I think this is episode 10 or 11 um, after episode 52. 52 we're going to do our own awards uh, episode I, do we have a name? For it? we don't we'll come up with that we've got plenty of weeks we've got 40 weeks um, <laughs> and we will, I don't know if it'll take the place of an episode of a week or if we'll do like a bonus episode. Um, but we're going to come up with categories and rank them. I'm trying to keep a running list right now so I don't have to go through. So I want to kind of finalize the categories with you guys at some point. Uh, but the stuff I've suggested so far, so far is best actor, best actress, best supporting actor, actress, uh, most likely to rewatch, least likely to rewatch movie you felt you were harsh too harsh on or not harsh enough on like you would change your score if you could go back and do it again uh best soundtrack original score best production uh and we'll probably come up with more categories maybe some of those will drop um but yeah i, w I want to go through our year and talk about the movies and, and sort of rank them i love that idea interesting um i think you need to have one for visuals though yeah visuals can can make it in um, I, I just sort of went a rough pass of um, categories. I also thought about jokey categories like best Oscar nominated film, best foreign film, but best movie from 2013. Um, I feel like best movie from 2013 <laughs> needs to be included. <laughs> because of Pumpkin, <laughs> We only so have fun. three from 2013 so far. It's like no, that's not 2013, isn't it? I know, there's three. It's Snowpiercer, Coherence, and About Time. Oh, I thought uh, three of yours were from 2013. No, only two because I did Mouse Hunt. Ah, right. Um, 1997. But if we end up doing Walter Mitty, which it sounded like at some point you're going to pick that. Oh, yeah. That's that, 2013. That's a great well. movie. Or just one more 1997 and we're tied. That's true. There are two from 1997. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, awesome. so we'll, we'll definitely do an awards episode at some point. It'll depend on where we're at in life and how much free time we have, whether it is the week's episode or a bonus episode. Um, here's the deal what is the worst movie that everyone like because right now it's a tie right well, we can't talk about no. it until the end of the year no we, we can talk about it because it's like it's like a running list right I mean okay. we're not even and then the yeah the year will be our final there's 40 <laughs> movies in the way uh, for me Do right now a... the movie oh. I think is the worst that I'm least likely to rewatch ever is Lost in Translation okay I will never watch Lost in again <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> uh, I like myself. It just doesn't have a place in in my my movie's taste. You it's, know what I mean? It's schmutz. Like I said, slapstick is can be good, but it's like I would just rather watch a classic. And even then, I'm not usually up to it. 
And then it's like, on all other fronts, it was just bad. Like, if any of these other movies were, were put on and, like, I could just, like, go about my business, right? Or watch it and be like, oh, cool, cool, this movie's back on. If Mouse Hunt was on, I would want to physically turn off the TV. <laughs> it must be removed. Um, but, yeah, so I, I might uh, try to go over that category list again and try to get at least the semi-final locked-in category list for next week so that we can keep running lists. Because I think it'll be annoying to go through 52 movies and try to rank, like, even the top five or three or whatever. Yeah. Um, you have a, a document, right? Is it pinned? Uh, yeah, it's pinned yeah. in the chat. I have the document of all the movies and our scores, and then I added director, writer, composer, so we can keep track of that. Um, and uh, uh, maybe I'll add another sheet with, like, the the award lists that we're considering and stuff like that. Um, maybe I should, I should maybe create a non edit link and start linking that in the description of the YouTube for people to like, if they want to see all the past movies and how we've ranked them and stuff. Um, but yeah, so once we have a final category list, we will probably again in the post episode like this, talk about it. And then at the end of the year, we will do an awards episode which should be fun Sounds spicy i think that's it for this week though so thank you for listening and we'll see you next time bye time